Today we're going to make a mead using blackberry honey that I got recently. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. This is right here some Pacific Northwest, um, raw Pacific Northwest blackberry honey. A lot of words to say. This is um, about 10 pounds of it that I got from Glory Bee, which is a place that I'm ordering more honey from because they have good varietals and good quality. And I wanted to make a traditional with it because why not? So let me tell you what I'm tasting with it. Yeah, it's got this, the blackberry side to me, um, I, I often equate it to other things like raspberries and blueberries because I have berry blend things. So I'm getting some of those similar family notes, the um, kind of tartness, but brightness you get from a raspberry, uh, a good raspberry, and then also the blueberry has a very earthy tone to it. So it's gonna make a, a fantastic traditional and I'm very confident with that. Let me tell you my recipe I'm using today, if you'd like to make this yourself. Um, I'm gonna be fermenting in this one gallon bucket, or excuse me, two gallon bucket. My recipe is up here. It is uh, one gallon of clear water, you know, nice water. Uh, I want to do, I'm going to use a lot of this, I'm going to use three and a half pounds of this, um, this blackberry honey. And I know that's a lot, but I want like a really just thick, awesome mead from it. We're going to be using the Lauvin QA23. I have some leftover packets of it here. So uh, I really like this one for traditionals because it, it does really well keeping the uh, honey character, which is obviously the most, most important part of a traditional. And uh, it's percent goes up to about 14 to 16. It depends on the strain kind of. So yeah, anyways, um, let me go ahead and first rehydrate my yeast because I think that's important. Uh, we are using, these are leftover packets. So this is about five grams in total. I only need two, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the five because I need to use this yeast anyways so they don't go bad. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of water into here, throw my yeast in so they can start to wake up. Okay, so this is starting to rehydrate. I'm gonna go ahead and mix together all of my um, honey and my water. I will also put a huge disclaimer here. I have gone ahead and sanitized everything with star sand water. This is a star sand water solution. You can't really see. And then my bucket has been cleaned with star sand. Everything I use to keep, you know, from having a bad fermentation has been sanitized with star sand. So let me go ahead and mix stuff now. We've mixed everything now, and I got about three and a half pounds of honey. So the starting gravity on this thing is not as high as I thought it would be, but it's still a good point. We're at roughly about 1.108, so not quite 1.110. Meaning that we're roughly, if I'm guessing, again, I'm guessing off the top of my head, we're somewhere in the realm of like 14.5%, um, I think, I don't know. So that's starting gravity 1.108. The yeast should absolutely be able to handle that, which is great. The yeast have been hydrate, rehydrating for a few minutes. I am gonna go ahead and add them into here. Now, um, the next thing I wanna do, because this is a traditional mead, it's low in nitrogen because honey is low in nitrogen, we need to add some. We're gonna add some DAP, which is dimonium phosphate. And this is gonna help us have a cleaner fermentation. I need to add one teaspoon, because it's one teaspoon per gallon. And that's it. I'm, I am front loading this because I'm lazy and quite honestly, I don't wanna to have to think about adding nutrients over time with, with this one. I am gonna go ahead now and put my lid on. We are going to label this thing, put an airlock on and ultimately um, come back after the primary unless there's some complication and see what it tastes like and then add some age. So this is the start of our blackberry mead. Super excited about it. It's gonna be awesome. So let me go ahead and put the stuff down and then I'll see you after the primary fermentation. And we're back. It has been about 25 days since I've done anything with this and it's done fermenting. I can tell you because I saw the bubbles stop from the airlock, but also with my gravity reading, I am noticing that we are currently setting at really not quite level. We're at 1.004. So there's some residual sweetness. Uh, left over from this. We started at 1.108. We are now at 1.004. Yep. Um, so I think that's roughly like a 13 point, 
five maybe percent ABV mead. I'll put it somewhere up here. Um, it's done fermenting. I'm excited to see what it's like. Obviously, decently high gravity. So let me pour a little bit here. Let's get a taste test of this thing. The aroma on it, it's definitely very yeasty, very young. You get the, um, the youthful side of a mead through the yeasty smell often. I do get a nice, um, uh, like actual fruity honey aroma. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of sweetness on the nose too. Um, let's try it now. Ooh, wow, the body on this is really full. It's got a nice mouthfeel. There's definitely um, a, a little bit of that sweetness that's popping through. A lot of heat from this thing though, with it being 13 and a half percent roughly, um, and only less than a month old. It's got some heat that it's gonna have to um, mellow out. This thing great. I mean, it needs time to age out, or not age, but it needs to time to mellow out. So I'm not done with this. Of course, it's only a month old. I'm not ready to bottle this by any means. I'm gonna put this thing back for at least a few more weeks, if not longer, and then come back and do another taste test and a bottling of this. But I'm pretty pleased with where it is right now. In the future, will I possibly add some more honey to back sweeten? Yeah, but I wanna make sure that this has some time to mellow out before I do that, so I don't go too sweet. It's not very sweet right now, even though it's got 0.004 of gravity, but um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's good though. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm, I'm gonna rack it over real fast actually. Okay, so we started this mead five months ago, and it's currently at, 1.000 gravity. Um, off camera, I stabilized it with potassium sorbate and that's so I can back sweeten. Unfortunately, I goofed and I do not have any more of the original honey. So we're gonna end up back sweetening today because it's safe to now with Tupelo honey from Honey Next Door. This is Brandon and he's a very generous person who has given me some honey to use. Thank you, Brandon. Check out Honey Next Door. This is Tupelo honey. We're gonna go ahead and mix in. Well, actually let's get a taste test. So it has a really juicy body. I use that uh, term a lot, but it's pretty smooth. It's got some sweetness still from the honey, but it could use a little bit more, to be honest. It does have a little bit of a slight bite. It's not quite at the point where like the alcohol is melded down enough. So I think this needs two things. We're gonna add a small amount of wine tannin. I don't know how much yet. And Tupelo honey. Let me add those things and then come back. Okay, I've mixed in a quarter pound of honey and a quarter teaspoon of powdered wine tannin. This will add some more tannic value to this, build up the body, and actually probably help it clear some because it's pretty hazy right now. The current gravity is 1.012. We've added just about, <laughs> my dog is wanting out, about 12 points of gravity. So um, let me let him out and then let's do a taste test. Now this powdered wine tannin uh, got a little clumpy as I put it in, so it might not have as full effect for a little while just to, oh, it's gonna take some time to mix in. So uh, let's taste it. Again, not clear right now. Ooh, ooh, that's very interesting. I tasted it right after the back sweetening. It's pretty bright. Tupelo honey had added a lot of brightness to it. The tannin that we added and what's mixed in currently has tempered down some of the sweetness to where it's not too bright. It's got this nice warm, honey character and warmth to it. Oh, that is, that's good. It's also got a little bit of the Lee's taste to it, honestly, because we mixed it up. Um, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and put our airlock back on this, let it sit for 24 hours to 48 hours at least to make sure there's no re-fermentation. Also to let some clarity hopefully reoccur because um, I don't wanna do any extra clearing things with this, then we'll come back and bottle it. All right, I'm back. It's been four days since we back sweetened and I didn't see any re-fermentation. I actually saw um, it begin to clear quite a bit, and you'll see as I show some uh, bottling video, it was pretty clear, it had a big layer of sediment at the bottom. That's what this uh, chocolate milky looking stuff is. It's tannin um, and particulates and stuff in the mead. We don't really wanna get that in the brew currently. It's still the same, it's still incredible. I think this thing will be even better with time as it melds more. Tupelo honey combined with that blackberry honey is creating this super awesome thing. It's got a, a decent tannic, um, yeah, it's got a nice tannic value, a decent acid value to it, and it's just gonna age really well. In total, we got two wine bottles and four and a half beer bottles. This one's a 
heifer um, that I'm probably just gonna put into the fridge because it has some of the grossness in it and drink it. Now, this is a traditional mead, which means that we tried to keep it to, to honey, water, and yeast only. Of course, we mixed honeys here, but it's still a traditional, still mostly blackberry of blossom honey. I encourage you to make your own traditional meads. It is very important to understand the mead making process and to, um, you know, just try to master a style of mead to try and make traditionals. You'll like it quite a bit, I promise. Um, this has been fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be back with more videos, traditionals, other recipes, <laughs> random mead content. Uh, you can find it all here on the channel. So appreciate you guys. Have a great evening or morning or afternoon. Cheers.